All right, cold music here, ish. <laughs> What's up? Uh, this one's for Carter. This is uh, Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne. Guitar parts by Randy Rhodes, but I'm just counting. Uh, what, what to say about this? Uh, just a few words on um, this whole song. This whole song is awesome. I remember when it came out, I was there. <laughs> It, it blew everybody's mind. It really did. Um, it was it was exciting because we heard Ozzy had a new band and this was it. It was pretty cool, cool times. I remember where I was when I heard it first and when I first learned this riff, <laughs> it was very cool. So hopefully um, it sounds like it translates even today that when kids learn it and, or adults learn it, it's just fun to play. There's a lot of musicality in this whole song um from the licks to the riffs to the to the chord progressions and, and whatnot it's it's a lot of musicality and i'll be i'll point that out as i go along um it, it's worth to note that if, if you don't know that randy was also a guitar teacher so got a nice place in my heart for that um he taught at his mom's shop mom's music store so and he was a um a lover of classical music and which leads me to my next point this first riff and i don't think i've ever heard it mentioned but it's my belief rightly or wrongly that this is a, almost a finger exercise it could almost be somewhat of a classical inspired um riff the reason being is because it's it's doing a little pedal point pedal point is where there's one note that the, the melody line or the riff comes back to um there's pedal point in Sweet Child of Mine. It's, it's always coming back to that D for the D chord and then C and then G, so on and so forth. This is the same way the pedal point, or you could think of it as um, pivot point perhaps, might be a good way to understand it, that you're, you're always coming back to this in the first part of the riff and then this being the F sharp and then the B in the other part of the riff, so. to it <clears throat> so there is a classical influence in my opinion absolutely and the fact for the fingering it almost sounds like an exercise because you're you're having to coordinate between two strings and a and a, and a riff and it's it's somewhat uh gymnastical <laughs> It's somewhat tough uh, to do because it requires a certain amount of coordination. Also, the picking hand, how I'm picking this is, is equally important. I'm playing two downs and then up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, in terms of picking, I would call this outside picking because we're staying on the outside of two strings. Down, up, down, up, down. It kind of gives you a lot of control. It's not to say if you were to stay do inside picking and staying in between these two strings, it wouldn't be valid or, or doable, but that is a possibility. But for, especially just for beginners, it's much easier to stay outside the strings and pick down, up, down, up, down, up. You could pick it down, 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 but there's no economy of picking here as such because you are you have to come back to this string up here and then you're playing this so if you have to double back why not play it as a down up you got to come up anyways down up down up that's the logic behind that um so with that being said here's the riff um two as i said two down strokes for the first f sharp note the second fret of the e string and then i would play i wouldn't play it like this um, because it's just easier to, to maintain this finger position throughout. It's, it's somewhat classical in nature because each it's you're staying in the second position. This would be known as second position, and each finger is maintaining that. Um, that's going to change with some of the other licks I'll show you. But for this lick, let the riff. Let's keep it here. Now I'm kind of barring the first and second, uh, the E string and the A string. Uh, with my first finger and um, so two downs then an upstroke on the fourth fret of the A string then back to the second fret of the E string then I go with my pinky to the fifth fret of the D string 
I'm oh, sorry, A string, and then back to the E string, second fret. There's that pedal point. Now I'm gonna shift my emphasis to the A string with my first finger. Now by shifting the emphasis, I mean I'm kind of like sliding down a little bit. So the first, the tip of the first finger is muting, kind of touching that. If I press on it and keep it pressed, it's gonna ring. There's gonna be overtones. So I'm kind of pulling back and the tip of my finger is touching that. So. So the next notes are second fret of the A string, the B note, to the fifth fret of the um, E string. Back again, pedal point, back to that um, A string on the second fret, to the third fr fret, I'm sorry, the fourth fret of the E string. Um, so two, five, four, five, and then two, there's the pedal point, sorry about that. So two, five, four, five, two, five, four, open. Then the whole riff starts again. It's kind of all there is to it. To a D chord, E, and then to this next riff. The next riff is where I think why they called it. Maybe Ozzy came up with the name of the song first, Crazy Train, and this next one was supposed to reminiscent of a choo-choo train. I don't know, but I think so. Anyway, so you got the A string and it's just a down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Then the A triad, which is five, six, seven on the B, G, and D respectively. And then you're gonna go, here's, here's how I do it, is go down one fret, so your first finger's now on the fourth fret, fifth and sixth, but flip these, flip flop these two. In other words, your first finger is gonna go up to the um, G string, your second finger is going down to the B string. It is in fact a triad of the E chord. But he's just playing the three, um, strings the D, G, and B string. Then you're going to slide down two frets, and that's a D arpeggio or D, a D chord triad. It's the same shape that was up here on the fourth. It's going down to the second now. And then A is going to be the next chord. In between all that is you have this chugging sound, this down, up, down, up. And then I know that the tab I'm actually using doesn't show this, but I'm hearing an open A and then the fourth fret of the E back to the open A. Or I've seen some tabs, you hit that third fret and then of the E string and then pull it or bend it slightly. Which was a common trick back in the 70s. I tend to, tend to like that better because it just, it, if you hit the, the wrong note, it's gonna sound horrible. And either way works. If you can do the bend, it probably sounds cooler. So anyways, now the, because this is happening so fast, I've always found this the hardest part of the song. Not the other part, this part's easy. And even the licks, some of the licks are super easy. This is the hard part because it, it's a lot of, it, you're palm muting kind of open sound and even it, it was so hard if you listen carefully he doesn't always hit down up down up he misses some some picking it's almost like they were in a rush in the studio and before he could re do an overdub and get it right it just left it because it had the energy that's it it I would advise just playing with um, like transcribe or any tune or whatever. You have to slow the song down and then just constantly work on it. Something to be said about Randy, I'd mentioned it to my student Carter, <laughs> that it's, this is, he was a very right on the, right on the beat. 
kind of a guitar player. It was almost like he he had a metronome built in. He was right on that beat. So that there's no there's no slop. It's it's kind of cool. It's very. First cool lick. <laughs> you gotta do this, it's so fun. It's just pull off, it's four, two, open on the G, four, two, open on the D, four, two, open on the A, right to the A chord. It's cool. <laughs> this is part of the fun of playing it, is doing some of these licks and they're just cool to play as a guitar player. Um, so, um, And that's a harmonic on the seventh fret of the D and the G. This is part of the musicality of this song. They're leading, he's leading into the chords, a D. Ba, D, D flat, B, A. Then another downward motion with the bass, four, two, it's, it's all very musical. So anyways, that's 5th fret, 4th fret, 2nd fret, open. To an E chord, 4, 2, open, E chord. 2, 4. Then make a, an F sharp bar chord, uh, power chord, if you will. First finger on the 2nd fret of the E, 3rd and 4th on the 4th fret of the A and the D. And then you're just... On, off, on with the first finger. So that's... There's a, that bass note's leading again. D to an E. So that is two, four, A, B. Not sure what that other one was. Anyway, <laughs> listen to it, you'll get it. And then it's on the tabs. Um, I wanted to go over why, yeah, I got a little bit of time here. I wanted to go over one of the first licks on this that's pretty easy to do. Well, as far as the solo is, so as far as the guitar playing, I'll go over a couple licks that are kind of easy to do and then I'll do the solo in another video. I call this a 70s lick. If you've watched some of the other videos, you'll know that this lick was done by everybody. It's Clapton, Page, Beck, Santana, uh, and now in this song. And it's still done. You hear it all the time. All this kind of. So what you're in fact doing is you're bending the uh, fourth fret of, and this can this is a pentatonic like it occurs over the pentatonic pattern. I have a video on the pentatonics, but this is an F sharp pentatonic because it's an A. So that's five, here's the scale pattern, pentatonic scale pattern. Five, two, five, two on the B and the E, two to bottom strings, then it's gonna go four, two, four, two, four. There's a blue note in this, you'll hear it in this little passage. It's called the blue note. It's actually um, a flat five note. Um, this is fourth fret of the A, third fret of the A, second fret of the A. Fifth fret of the E, second fret of the E. And actually, you could even go. Utilizing that open string, you'll hear that in this passage. So, anyways, in this pentatonic pattern, they're bending the uh, fourth fret in this case. And it, let me back up, sorry. This pattern can move just for those that aren't aware that this this pentatonic pattern isn't the only place on the guitar if you're in like the key of a minor uh b uh c sharp 
uh, fourth fret E. So it occurs all over the place. That's what us guitar players have it easy. Once you learn this little lick, if you're playing a song in A minor, you can do the same thing. And that's kind of how it works. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. So here we go. It's utilizing the fourth fret of the G and then second fret, second fret, pull off from five to two, three to two on the B string. So B string, five, two, fifth fret on the G, back to the second fret of the uh, B, then five, four, two, which that's the blue note right there again. It is in this case a, uh, a C. And then you're going four, this is where a nice little pattern, four on the D, two on the G, four on the D, two on the D, four on the A now, two on the G, four, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, oh. So, I'll play it again. A. All right. that I played it great, but that's the gist of it. The thing about this lick is, is if you listen to it, he's runs again, he's, it's like he's playing, he's got that metronome going in his head. Da, 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 do, da, 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 you know, so on and so forth. So play it with the track slowed down exactly when he plays those notes and you'll get the metronomic feel of this lick. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, one last bit that I wanted to point out is the, this, this one lick that he does here. These are um, minor arpeggios and major arpeggios. The first one being a F sharp arpeggio. It's gonna do, this later in the song, but it's gonna go nine, five, pull off nine, five on the B E string to seven on the B string. So it's a minor arpeggio. This is a F sharp, F sharp chord. This is an F sharp arpeggio. In other words, it's the root note, the flatted third, which makes it minor. And then the fifth, which is in this case is C sharp. And then you move it up a fret and do another minor arpeggio. In this case, it's the G minor. And then you're gonna move it up another fret and it's gonna go 11, seven, nine. Now it's gonna, from there, it's gonna change the same pattern. It's gonna, first finger is gonna move one fret. It changes to a, a G sharp major. Then it's gonna be major arpeggios all after that. Now you're gonna go up one more fret, 12, nine, 10. One more fret, 13, 10, 11. 14, 11, 12. 15, 12, 13. Uh, 16, 13, 14. 17, 14, 15. And then 18, 15 to 15 right there. Uh, D. Sounds like a diminished. No, an augmented, sorry. But anyways, uh, so let's do it again. the last note on it that's what it is technically the 18 of 15 I'm not sure if there was supposed to be a 16 here or he left it on purpose but but that's what it, the last tail end of it take a look at your um tabs that that's that's a great one it's almost another exercise a guitar exercise so all right have fun hopefully this helped use your ears with this there's a lot of nuances in it and there's a lot of um 
things that you can pick up by using your ears, especially if you got tabs. Use your ears because the tabs, not all these tabs I'm seeing online are correct. <laughs> so use your ears. All right, have a good day. Take care. Hope this helped. Bye.